Tim, what brings you to SW19 today? <laughs> well, we're all obviously getting pretty excited about Wimbledon itself, but um, uh, I really came along to lend my support to um, the Tennis Foundation and, and uh, to really support all the good work that, that Sue Mappin's been doing. And, and it's really about encouraging more and more people to you know, play tennis and get out there and have some fun because this is the time of the year when um, there's so much interest and, and uh, we really need to try and capitalise that um, on a, on, as a whole for um, you know, the next generation. Because you must get asked to do so much stuff and be part of so many projects. And What was the key thing about this that made you think, I want to get involved in it, I want to be part of it? Well, it's always a, I think it's always about the sort of next generation, whether it's uh, you know, some of my sponsors that I've worked with over the years. We've always tried to have initiatives um, where we're getting the youngsters involved. And, and uh, I think that is the essence of the, of the Tennis Foundation. It is about um, trying to capitalise on the interest on the game right now, because during Wimbledon it's... It's just fantastic. You see the sort of park courts are always full. Um, people are playing, but then it's quite easy for the um, for those players to kind of slip away. And, and uh, I just really like the concept about um, getting kids playing and, and getting uh, having fun on the tennis court. It amazes everybody every year the amount of people that have never played in their life. They watch Wimbledon and suddenly they want to go out there and play tennis. Yeah, it is, and and I think that's the beauty of the game. Um, you know, you can play at any age, you can start at any age, and and uh, it's a fun, healthy. You know, sort of active lifestyle, and, and uh, I think that's always to be encouraged. Um, but as you say, we uh, I've seen some of the um, the statistics of, of 3.2 million people pick up a racket over the next few weeks, and um, you know, two million of them will only play once. And I think that's what we need to you know tap into, for, certainly for the development of the game, because we've you know we've got the biggest and best tournament in the world, but we haven't really had that many genuine contenders. And I think if we can get the sort of base of our pyramid a bit broader at, at grassroots, then hopefully the good ones, you know, can come through towards the top of the game further down the line. So you must be delighted, not only are you sitting alongside Tim Herman, but <laughs> something that you've worked so hard on, it's coming to fruition. Well, yeah, I, I mean, the thing is that uh, anybody can play tennis, so it, it is actually a game that any anybody of any age can start playing, and we know that, as Tim has said, there are a lot of people who go out during this time, they're inspired by watching on on TV and they want to get out there and have a go. What we need to do is make sure that they then we can then connect with them and that's why we're we're launching eparktennis.com because that's a place where people who play in public places can go, they can they can chat to each other um, and it's also a place where people who operate in parks can get involved and and market their programs in parks. So um, we're if you like we're replicating uh, the, the, the screen here at Wimbledon, um, out there in the 16 areas of the country where, where there are other big screens, and so uh, Tim's name, Henman Hill, uh, we're just <laughs> going to plant a few more around the country. <laughs> Marvellous. Now we've seen the rise of social networking sites like Facebook, I think the wonderful thing about this is it, it's bringing together a community, people that like the same thing, they can find coaches, they can find tennis courts, and you're really tapping into something that is big at the moment. Mm. Well, I, I don't know whether we're supposed to mention Facebook, but we have twice now. But it is, it's a, it's a place where people can get together and chat and challenge each other, organise tournaments, have a barbecue, and why not have a, have a little tournament at the same time. It's about people having fun. Uh, people being able to afford to play. 40% uh, of park courts now are free for people to just go along and, and, and play. It's a place where we can talk to local authorities so we can get some courts upgraded. We can invest in that through the money that we get from the LTA every year. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's a really, it's, it's a long-term strategy. If you look at what happened in France 30 years ago, um, Philippe Chatrier invested in tennis getting more people playing and now uh, French tennis is just enormous and so many thousands, millions of people play and um, you, you could die on a tennis court but you'll probably be about 80 or 90 when you do, you know, it's, it's a game that you can play for the rest of your life. Oh, and Tim, the key thing is that we've got 365 days in a year and we want people to be playing tennis out on those courts. So many times you walk through parks and there's empty courts and people don't really know where they are, they don't know if they can use them and this is something and I'm sure it's frustrated you over the years to see how many people say well I just don't know where to play tennis. Yeah I, th I think um, you know go back sort of 10 years ago maybe um, there was more people that thought that tennis um, as a professional game was just about four weeks around Wimbledon and then um, we sort of went into hibernation but uh, 
Um, I think they're much more aware now of the game um, globally at the highest level, and I think that's uh, you know one of the aspects that we want to, to try and encourage that you know they too can play all year round, and and certainly. Um, you know, the, the climate doesn't help at times in, in winter, it, it, it can be difficult, but um, I think the game is definitely becoming more and more accessible and, and giving kids the, the opportunity to play so that it's not just a, you know, not just a sort of two, two week phase where they think, oh, tennis is quite fun, but I'm not going to play. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that they, you know, keep going throughout the whole year. And um, I think, you know, that will go, go on to, to keep improving the standards. Um, of the game as a whole. So finally, see these next two weeks, you're going to give it a, a massive push. We, well, yes, we are, but I think you know this is a long-term strategy, and, and um, what we really want to do is encourage young people who want, to, who are perhaps young coaches or, or just want to work and, and and develop a business for themselves. We're here to help them. We've got to have 225 hub parks, beacon parks across the UK within the next three years. So we're looking for that entrepreneurial visionary coach who would love to be involved with us and uh, and you know what what we're what our aim is 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 to get all those two million connecting with those organized places to play and um, uh, with the help of everybody out there I'm sure we can do it.